There's a lot of false information going around about how Mario got his name. Some say he was named after former New York Governor Mario Cuomo. Nintendo's official story seems to be that they got it from their former landlord, Mario Sagale, when he happened to walk in during a naming session. This fake news really just shows how badly they want to evict the truth. The real story is a much darker and twisted tale. Filled with murder, betrayal, and an extensive cover-up. One that Nintendo executives hoped would never see the light of day. But in order to properly tell the story, we have to go way back to the founding of Nintendo on September 23rd, 1889 in Kyoto, Japan. Nintendo is said to have its roots originally as a trading card company, also buying and selling in the way of various trinkets. Looking closer towards those roots, these weren't just ordinary trading cards, but which loosely translates to tarot card. Legend tells that the very first Nintendo tarot card reading produced the Dark Horse. There's a lot of different interpretation behind what this could have meant. Early footage alludes to the creation of the first real human-titan hybrid. Manga and anime have washed away the very fabric of this reality as some kind of fantasy epic. Once the last titan had fallen, it became easy to cover it up as ancient folktale myth or legend. Fast forward to 1922. A cargo vessel carrying some new Nintendo merchandise met a mysterious fate. There's no confirmation about what goods Nintendo was carrying exactly, but appears to have angered some kind of ancient sea monster. Sightings of the mysterious sea creature spread all across the Sea of Japan. The last manifest of this charter conveniently disappeared just days after the vessel was reported missing. Nintendo's president at that time, Fusahiro Yamauchi, had this to say about the incident. I feel just terrible about the lost souls upon Charter 1182. I offer my condolences to the families and friends of those affected. There's no way we could have known this would happen. This statement went largely unnoticed, until years later, when a reporter at Ankh News asked for further clarification on the statement. How could you have known something bad would happen? What was it that you were transporting on that vessel? Nintendo did not respond to the inquiry. These are just the first of many strange happenings that surround Nintendo's early history. It wasn't until 1979 that Nintendo would start to find its footing as the company we know it for today. Nintendo opened its first American subsidiary in New York City, and there began a shift towards arcade game development. Some of Nintendo's first arcade titles, Sheriff and Radar Scope, saw poor sales in the West, and put Nintendo in a difficult position. Struggling to find any semblance of financial success, Nintendo put Miyamoto in charge of their next game. The level of pressure on Miyamoto cannot be understated. Nintendo was seriously facing potential bankruptcy after the launch of some previous games. What emerged out of this pressure cooker was pure genius. A suspiciously successful product, Donkey Kong, was a huge hit back at home and in the West. Everybody grew to know the name but the lovable little protagonist name, Jumpman, was largely unknown, and frankly, more of a placeholder than a serious character choice. With the success of Donkey Kong, Miyamoto and his team set out to develop and expand upon this little guy with his own game. And this is where the story really begins. So here it goes. Yes! The year is 1982, and Nintendo had just hit the jackpot with their hit game Donkey Kong. The world was just starting to fall in love with the little guy, who Miyamoto had given the name Mr. Video. Mr. Video, Jumpman, just another clue about how Nintendo couldn't even keep their story straight. Anyways, Nintendo was hard at work on their next game, Donkey Kong Jr but just couldn't decide on how to officially name their protagonist. Mr. Video or Jumpman just didn't seem to be fitting the little hero. Miyamoto had rejected several ideas, and the pressure was starting to boil over. And this is where insider information was crucial at cracking this story. Luckily for me, I was able to get exclusive one-on-one -on -one access to a former developer who was working at Nintendo during that time. 
Now for this individual's safety, I have masked their voice and identity. First off, thank you so much for your time. The world is dying to know. Could you tell us your experience during Mario's naming? Absolutely. It was a bloodbath. So, there were two lead developers that each came with their own ideas. Shiri Dango and Kevin Mochi. Both developers were critical in the creation of Donkey Kong. Mr. Dango being the inventor of the barrel, and Kevin Mochi being the creator of the hammer. According to my insider, Dango had strong feelings about naming the character Barrel Man based on his ability to leap over barrels. Meanwhile, Mochi proposed the name Mario, which he wanted to name after his pet goldfish. Hmm. The company was torn on these two names, and employees started taking sides with Dango or Mochi, causing a potential rift in the company. There were extended talks of the company splitting into two. Miyamoto had heard enough and demanded that the developers reach an agreement. Dango, in his frustration of the past proceedings, yelled out, 1v1 me, bruh! Mochi agreed without hesitation. The duel commenced at high noon. Tensions were as high as the sun in the sky. Droplets of sweat poured down Miyamoto as this all played out. They faced back to back, took their steps, and finally, their shot. Only one could emerge, and so it was. Mario, a birth in blood. The company agreed to dispose of Dango and all the evidence that this had ever happened. They took his body, dismembered it, and shoved it down the sewer system. In an honoring tribute, a character was named after poor Dango. Bullet Bill. <laughs>